Nice Miata. Uh, hey there, stranger. Is it alright if I pretend to know what you got there? This is a 660cc turbocharged three-cylinder, five-speed, front-engine, rear-drive miniature sports car with a modular hardtop, a single rear reverse light, fake wood grain interior, and levels of smugness that can only be measured in kilometers per hour. RCR has driven the AutoZam AZ1, the Honda Beat, and now with the Suzuki Cappuccino, our ABC trilogy is complete. Of all the three K cars, the Cap is the fastest. Now, I'm being a little unfair because this Cappuccino has had some work done. Bigger turbo, forged internals, bigger injectors, a new tune from Mines, which is a tuning company in Japan, which brings the horsepower to over 100. Brandon the owner isn't sure of the precise horsepower because he hasn't gotten a chance to put it on the dyno yet. All the work was done in Japan when Braden was stationed there in the service. He just got back to the US like a few months ago and he's in college now so getting correct numbers on the dyno that isn't a priority for him right now. But while stationed in Japan, this was Brandon's daily. The lower taxes that go with K cars make it an excellent daily, especially when you aren't required to go that far from base. Here in the US, people think this is a Miata. The front, at a glance, looks like an NB MX-5, and it's small and curvy and clearly Japanese, so what else could it possibly be? In fact, while filming this, an older man came up with his digital point-and-shoot and said, May I take a picture of your car? Sure, said Brandon. Thank you, click. My wife loves Miatas, and none of us had bothered to correct him. I mean, he approached the car from the right side, the right-hand side steering wheel was looking right at him, but nope, this is a Miata! Suzuki Cappuccino, the official car of every guy you hate but don't actually know anything about. It all started in 1987, as Suzuki was planning to recreate a sporty reputation for the company, culminating in a project car that made its debut at the Tokyo Motor Show inside of just two short years. Designated the SX306, Production of the Cappuccino began in October 1991 and was available for sale in Japan one month later on the promise of affordability, style, and performance. Of the 15,113 cars produced in its first two years, 13,318 stayed in Japan that year because we know of New Zealand's ability to just kind of gimme, gimme, gimme. It was a car whose performance was as consistent as Rock Radio's mission to make you hate the Red Hot Chili Peppers. And people in North America wanted a taste but they had to wait. Sure, people will take one look at this thing and assume you tried to order a Miata off of Wish, but this isn't a car for those people, the ones who care about appearances. This is a car for people in the market for a good time, without having to call the phone number on the truck stop glory hole to find it. The driving dynamics are fantastic. The car noses in instantly. Power comes on at about 5,000 RPM. 7,200 RPM is the go spot. And with the larger turbo, it feels like the little three-cylinder wants to infinitely spin. As if, as if you'd see the top of Doug Dimadome's hat before you see the end of a Cap's rev range. Yep, yeah, I missed third again. But 100 horsepower is the beginning of the danger zone for a cappuccino's transmission. This 5-speed doesn't really want to handle this kind of power. According to Brandon, 130 horsepower can break this tiny gearbox. The turbo, right now, is making 17.5 psi and singing through a cheap copy of an HKS blow-off valve. One of Brandon's side projects for this car is to take that blow-off valve out and put in a combination one so he can just choose whether he wants to go choo-choo or here's a photo of our friend Don. He's six foot four. The top of the roof comes up to his belly button. Here is a picture of a cappuccino parked next to a Mini Cooper S. It makes the Mini look like a Denali. The roof comes off in three pieces. First the sides come off, turning the car into a T-top, and then the middle comes off, turning it into a Targa. Then the rear glass folds down, and you have a full convertible. These little rollover bars are not standard. Brandon put them on. He said they will make you less dead in the event of a rollover. Each of the roof pieces go into a Suzuki bag and then go into the Suzuki trunk 
which means you have no rear storage. Unlike the Honda B, a cappuccino does have power steering. You can one-hand it around the parking lot. When we were driving around, even with the top down, in winter, no less, a cappuccino doesn't stand out. No one was looking at us, even with the BOV chirping and the car swerving around within its lane, dodging potholes. So why would you own a cappuccino? Which commands a price now in the United States of $10,000. And it, it doesn't even perform the look of me job that the Beat and the AZ1 does. So why do you want a car that no one cares that you're driving? Well, because you care more about driving than you care about being noticed. A cappuccino is for someone seeking their own cornering nirvana. They want that more than other people's eyeballs. Even the layout of the instruments, the curve of the gauge cluster, the HVAC, radio, and shift knob, all of these are Miata-esque. But this is way more goofy than a Miata. You're gonna get clobbered. You're gonna get run over. You could die out here. The heartbeat of America, Chevrolet! Every moment you're awake, because your swirling head is your first line of defense against the emergency room. Motorcycle riders, you know what I'm talking about. And that's why I think the Cappuccino is the most dangerous of the ABC cars, because of its MX-5 likeness. The AZ-1 and the Beat are pattern interrupts. Drivers see, uh-oh, different shape. Refresh, refresh, refresh cache. Allocate additional system resources to visual processors. Identify, assess, respond. But when they see a Cappuccino, it's, Identify Miata, non-priority, allocate minimum resources, next task. It's easy to imagine being offended that people don't recognize your cappuccino for what it is. After all, no one goes through the trouble of getting a car like this to have it be mistaken for something else. But cars are sort of like the messages they often convey about who we are. They get lost in translation. It's like getting angry and writing a song to blow off steam, but when you play it at Cafe 210 West, the content of the lyrics get drowned out in the noise of an enthusiastic crowd who don't really care about the message. They just want to hear music. You see a Suzuki Cappuccino? You don't care about the background or what the owner has to put up with. You just want to drive it yourself. Or take your picture with it. Or admire it from afar, which is about 10 feet. Because to most people, it almost doesn't matter what this car is. And it's like that angsty-ridden song. You can play the same four chords to shout a message into the void, but sometimes it's easier just to let your frustrations go than to try and correct everybody. But I can't stop admiring the design. Just make everything smaller. Everything really smaller. I mean, look, look at the emergency brake. I'm aware I'm wearing a glove, but the handbrake disappears into my palm. And the shifter, look at this, it's two fingers dainty. Oh, the shifter is good, but I put the Honda Beats shifter above the caps. The cap shifter is, is very good, but the beat is better because of superior Honda slickness. Other modifications include a strut tower bar, a hot air intake, not really an issue because it's a turbo and the air is getting hot anyway, and the, the intercooler is going to cool it down. Even though the intercooler is only about the size of an oil cooler, it still works. This car also has period HID headlights, and I was giggling at the Joanne Fabrics gold heat shielding on the battery box and the AC lines until Brandon said that the new tune is generating just enough heat through the headers that some plastic parts were getting all, all like Fruit Stripes gum gooey. The adhesive reflective gold is a stopgap until he gets some time to heat wrap the headers. And he might have to take the engine out to do that. What could it mean? What could it be? This is definitely Cessna 150 closeness in here. The cap does have a center armrest, but you're not going to use much of it. But... If you take this car to a car show, plenty of people are going to know what it is. Hell, we had a cappuccino at our RCR meet in the United Kingdom, hashtag Cove Crew. But whenever you have a car this ostentatiously aberrant, this unorthodox to the limited scope of provincial eyes, eyes that will never see Parasite because they're eyes that hate reading subtitles, then you're in for an ordeal. Because for every person who knows what this is, you'll have a dozen people who make incorrect guesses. And you can try to correct them. But some people are strangely defensive about having their car knowledge questioned. And before long, you end up with a bunch of swollen-bellied armchair auto mechanics gathered around your cappuccino, eyes blazing with judgment like an automotive council of ricks. Okay, sure. This is just one scenario. 
a hypothetical scenario. And it likely happens to far fewer people than you'd think. Although I'm sure someone in the comments will have a car show horror story of their own, detailing how they got judged one time. And feel free to share it, we're all friends here. But the main takeaway is that a car like this can never live a life of virtuous, uh, anonymity. Because the cappuccino is just here to make you feel good. In a way, it inspires a certain enthusiastic hope. A giddiness that you might have missed. Because society has spent so much time drilling cynicism into your brain and telling you it's the key feature of adulthood rather than the bug. It's okay to enjoy things. Even things that other people don't understand. There's nothing childish about hope. There's nothing childish about fun. There's nothing childish or naive about truly believing that being good will lead to a good life. And there's nothing childish about being childish sometimes. As long as you're having fun responsibly, who cares what other people think? Who cares if other people think that a cappuccino that you paid a premium for is a Miata? You can play the same four chords and shout a message in the void because you know That you can't rebuild every single thing that you've destroyed, so let them go They say it ain't complaining if you do it in a song But maybe it's complaining if you've done it all along but who's to say what's right when you're the patron saint of wrong? It's almost through. Then the year will start anew. Then the year will start anew. Then the year will start anew.